Welcome back to another episode of That Show on the Weekend. I'm Tyler, your host, and with us today again is Steven. Steven, how are you? Good, how about you? Oh, I'm doing alright. So, what topic are we doing today? Okay, now, now let's find out what topic are we doing. Because I'm going to end this now. I mean, you can talk about whatever, but I'm super excited about Hoopa. We've been waiting a while. Okay, so good. <clears throat> What topic are we doing again today, Steven? I'm going to talk about Hoopa. Hoopa! Yeah. Not that thing that your grandma does with your That's grandfather. <laughs> okay, so tell us about Hoopa. And well, it's not a drug. No, no it isn't. It's Pokemon. Yes. Because there are more than 151 of them. Sorry, one Gen 1ers. But there's more than just that one game. So how did you get your Hoopa? Well, uh, right now, until the <coughs> 23rd of December, if you happen to go to McDonald's with your 3DS and connect to their Wi-Fi and then open up your mystery gift and then download a mystery gift from the internet, you'll get a Hoopa. And this is, wow, it's a Hoopa. It's super exciting. And I got two of them because I have Pokemon Y and I have Alpha Sapphire. So you can get them from anything of the current generation. What is your favorite Hoopa so far? There's the one Hoopa. Okay. The favorite move, maybe. Yes. I literally got Hoopa, what, what time, like an hour ago? Yeah, we, yeah. we, we stopped the McDonald's before this, so. So that I could get two Hoopas. I've, I got a big, I got a double quarter pounder. Yeah, so when you get Hoopa, you go to the nearest Pokemart after receiving it from the person at the Pokemon Center, and there will be a guy that gives you a bottle that changes forms, so there's a... There's Hoopa Vanilla, and then Hoopa Unbound, <coughs> and uh, its two main moves are Hyperspace Hole and that other one. And one's a 90 power unblockable move, and the other one's a 100 power unblockable move. And they hit if you protect or detect or do anything that normally prevents you from taking damage. It just bucks your day out, and it will never miss. Yo. So yeah. that's exciting. And all of its other movesets are uh, power split, so it evens everybody's attack and special attack out before boosts. So if you use Hoopa's Nasty Plot, it applies to the new stat. And it averages everybody's defense, and it's got Trick Room and Wonder Room, where Wonder Room swaps everybody's attack and special, or special defense and defense. Or with Trick Room, the Silver Pokemon goes first, but its ability, which is super, super, super cool, is any time it hits <coughs> with a move, which it will, because it's got two unblockable moves, mm -hmm. it steals your shit. And then it also learns Trick, so after you kill the first guy in line, and the next guy pops out, uh, you swap items with that guy, too. So you're just... It's an asshole Pokemon for asshole people. Yeah, it's kind of like how playing Blue is in Magic. Yeah, absolutely. It's an asshole color for asshole people. Yes. It's, I'm gonna have fun today, and you, you're gonna sit back and enjoy my brand of fun. Which is why I have a blue-white control deck. Now, some people may be wondering, is this tournament legal? No, it's a legendary Pokemon. Yeah. Everybody, no, you can't use legendary Pokemon. It's disappointing. Yeah. Which is why I have Ludicolos. My only Pokemon experiment experience is with Ruby and uh, SP. Yeah, the the original Ruby, not the Omega Ruby, which right. is the new remake of Ruby. I still like the SP. It was nice. I had an SP for a number of years, and then I traded it out for a DS, because the original DS had a Game Boy Advance slot on the bottom of that it. That sounds like DS! I... No. Because, <laughs> no, I got the, the DS Lite, which was the fancier one. Yeah. Because I never get the consoles at launch. I always get the special fancy ones. Which is why I have the Legend of Zelda Ocarina Time 3DS. Yeah. Which was a steal because it was pre-owned. Yeah. Somebody was like, I don't want this. I like, missed my I PSP. I will take it. I gave it away. <sighs> yeah, I never got the PSP. I had friends that played games. I liked it. Well, I was a kid, so probably I would have liked that. Everything. 
Um, you know, you would take the thing on the bus and you'd play for an hour and pass the time quite well. Well, that's why I always have a Nintendo handheld, because they go everywhere with me. Yep. Gotta go to the dentist, grab the DS. Yeah. It fits <coughs> in your pocket, and it's portable, and it plays a long time on the battery. Yeah. Oh, um... <coughs> oh, sorry, audience. <coughs> you, Kojima got banned from accepting an award at the Games Award. Yeah. Uh, my understanding of that is apparently he is working on something, and he is bound to the project, and he must complete the project in a certain deadline, so he is stuck in the office until they squeeze all of what they need out of him. Our Twitter, like, exploded, giving him support and everything. Like, he should have accepted this. Well, the guy that accepted the award did it because he was upset, and that was part of his accepting of the award on the other guy's behalf, is, <clears throat> yeah, I'm accepting this award because the other guy's stuck and can't be here, and it's bullshit. Yeah. And that's the only reason anybody even knew something happened. Mm. Other topic news, uh, Kindle Fire, um, they figured out they could root it and put, like, Android on there, and, like... Well, it have does the, have Android. Well, like, they could root it and, like, get all the other apps, like that you wouldn't... Oh, we've been able to do that for years. I've done it before. But think about it. I mean, I only learned about this for, like, a little while ago, but, like, you could root it. You get, like, a $50 laptop, or tablet. Um, it's a little slow. It's quad core, right? Kindle Fire. But then you can, like, for $50, you can have, you know, something comparable to, like, you know, an Apple Air. And you could take it around everywhere you go. Well, uh... The Kindle Fire <clears throat> app is also on the Google Play Store, so if you just have a tablet, it's already a Kindle. Yeah. Um, the except, so if you put the Google Play Store through however you want to do it, and there's plenty of FAQs for that on your Kindle Fire, that's all you actually really need. You don't mm -hmm. have to root it. Because once you have access to the Google Play Store, you can now install things that aren't in the app the the Kindle app store, which is the <coughs> Android store, but carefully groomed, and I have some issues with it from a personal developer standpoint. Uh, part of the issue with the Kindle Fire, or the Kindle app store, is while it is basically the Google Play store, um, there's a lot of stipulations that harm the developers of apps that are on there. For example, I'm not sure if they still do this, but um, they have the this app is free today thing, <laughs> and they don't have to talk to the developer for that. And there's no reimbursement from that. Yeah. So like, yeah, you got all this exposure, but you didn't have any uh, say in it. Uh, Amazon doesn't say, hey, I'm going to make your app free today. Is that okay with you? They're just like, whoops, my hand slipped, it's free. And there's nothing you can do about that. I've been thinking about uh, having to arm a crisis on Steam because uh, it just keeps crashing its startup. What? The game. Crisis. Might oh. have to return it because it just won't work. Like, That's weird. Because I had got the bundle deal. Like, I was like, 14 bucks, I can get Crisis, Crisis 2 Maximum, and Crisis Warhead and Crisis Ward. Which I own all. All of them. I own Crisis Wars Retail on a disc. I own Crisis, uh, because I paid for it on Origins, um, Crisis 2 um, Limited, because uh, Crisis, or the EA support team couldn't get my Crisis Warhead working, so they just gave it to me. And then one day Crisis Warhead just started working. <laughs> and um, Crisis 3, because I paid for that a long time ago. But I was like, I don't want to have to use Origins anymore. Well, that's because <laughs> Origins isn't fun. No. Um, I feel like they license things to computers, not people. Which I think Steam got right, because it's account-based. Origin is technically account-based, but when you try to launch a game after reformatting, it says, Sorry, you've used your expiration key. Oh, you well, <laughs> there's a few other adventures that Steam has that Origins doesn't. Fairly certain origin still doesn't enable cloud saving. Yeah. So oh, I think they do. do like they? unlimited titles. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's bloated. 
I don't really buy EA games. I haven't bought an EA game in a very long time. I think the last one I bought was Dragon Age Origins 2. Mm. Only because when I got around to purchasing it, it wasn't on Steam. Mm. Because I missed that window of opportunity. Yeah. Because of the whole <clears throat> EA Steam Fallout nonsense. Now there's a push for people to go to God games, DOG games. I have a love for good old games. They're not, Part, they're not good old games anymore. They don't. They want to be known as God Games because they wanted to keep the URL. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying. Whatever. So, uh, my, the reason I like Gog, I guess, is uh, there's no DRM. Yeah. And that's super great. the The trade off is you don't get the <clears throat> advantage of Steam having your games right there and you're like, oh, I haven't played this in a while. Right click install, and all oh, my save data is there. Sweet. But you get the ability to uh, install it whenever you want, just to have it on hand. They do have their own Steam-like service, but all it does is download and install the game. Yeah. Uh, it still doesn't do the cloud saving, but that's all you really need. Yeah. I like the, 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 the way it's Steam, because I have all my games in just one folder that I've just kept on a separate hard drive, and every time I reformat, I just repoint it as a Steam library, and... I don't have to reinstall it. All I have to reinstall is like the D- DirectX or like whatever. Right, the things that run on the run on yeah. or the runtime. But once the game starts, like oh, and like you can't do that with Origins. <laughs> no, you can't. But uh, <clears throat> good old games, when you install things, at the time of install, it does that. No, it it does. doesn't launch it the first time you launch it, mm. which is what Steam does. And I also like old games because they have all of these super old titles that they have patched lovingly to work on the most recent machines so if you are in the mood to play might and magic what seven on your windows 10 64-bit machine they have you covered Mm. and i really appreciate that there's a lot of older titles that i really really like and I don't personally want to make them work. I could. I had the time at one point to make sure these things worked. But if you're like, I want to play Heroes of Mind Magic 3, just the good old games version, mm-hmm. it runs mm-hmm. as soon as it's run. Or yeah. as soon as you're done installing and setting it up. I like those Steam because some of my older games like that wouldn't work that I have retail. Once I bought it on Steam, they fixed it. See, that's part of the difference between you and I. It's like when you're talking old games, you're talking like Crisis. When I'm talking old games, I'm talking like DOS. No, one of my old games was, uh, uh, well, I mean, I have Toy Story, no, not Toy Story, uh, Army Men, like, Toys in Space and stuff. It's like a really old game. But one of the famous ones, not famous, I don't know, the game that wouldn't work retail all of a sudden was my Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Knight Academy discs. When it's when I install it from the Oh, disc yeah, that's on Steam. But even then, that's, like, newer than Knights of the Old Republic. Well, I mean, I was born in 1990, so, I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> you. Such a wee baby. Not necessarily. I, I consider everybody. I'm almost 29. No. I, my birthday's next week. <laughs> Mine's the 19th. That's, I'm getting closer and closer to 30. No. All my coworkers are like, yeah, I graduated high, high school and like... You should, guys, oh, check out College's Humor Second Puberty. Because that's like at 35. Yeah. Anyway, so my other topic, one of my other topics, is how Comcast is trying to treat, like, their wires as a local network. So, like, they're trying to get around the FCC laws about uh, internet neutrality. Like, if you access, like, Netflix and whatever from Comcast's account, because Netflix is, has their caching servers on the Comcast networks, so it's, they're saying, they're trying to, so what they did was they got, like, some real smart lawyer people who were good at the technical things, because technically, technically, Comcast is kind of, like, Oh, because you're on our network, it's never actually going on the internet because it's just our local network. So basically, it's the same thing of if a guy says, I'm going to buy the entire internet. Okay, now everything's on my local network. 
So that's what Comcast is trying to do to get around the net neutrality laws. With say, so like, it doesn't like charge your data caps or whatever with like Netflix and like these different streaming services. How is that set up? Is that like whenever you point to their DNS servers, I, they count that as their local network? Because that's easy to get around. Well, here's another thing. It's like the Doxis is everything over the cable, right? There's yeah. technically a lot more bandwidth there than they're letting on, right? So you have different frequencies which determine which signal, like television signals, one frequency, internet is another frequency, phones another frequency, all in the same line. They just don't interfere with each other. Oh, except for the phone. Nobody does phone over cable. Right. Uh, but here's the thing. Yeah, that's the whole point behind uh, DSL. So, but here's the thing. If you're streaming data, or streaming, like, TV... Does that count against your internet data caps, or your does it count as a TV? Because okay, so <laughs> I know I used to work for AT and T Uverse, uh, even though it doesn't exist in New York, which is it's garbage service from my understanding. I've never actually had to deal with it. So basically, the way they work <clears throat> is they do television, internet, and telephone over one DSL modem, and if that sounds dreadful <laughs> it broke all the time and i was doing tier one tech support which means you pick up the phone and <laughs> you got me yeah and that, that cool. shit is the worst but uh the telephone or the tv and the internet don't count towards each other's caps in that case mm -hmm. even though it, the tv does use the internet yeah. technically yes but uh but the but for the tv it's like you have everything all at once Continuously. Right. So here's the thing. If somebody's torrenting the house, the TV goes out. So they use the same service, but um, the television doesn't count towards the data caps. Of course, AT&T Uverse doesn't really cap your data. Mm -hmm. It, uh, like, Time Warner Cable keeps track of how much you're downloading a month, and it lets you know that, but it doesn't do anything. Um, well, that's the way it should be. I don't like data caps. I don't think they right. should it's be Right. It's one of thing. the few things Time Warner Cable has always done right is... Like, I've downloaded 23 gigabytes worth of shit in a month. <laughs> and they're just like, okay, just, let you, just to let you know. Really? I'm like up to 40. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't stop it. They don't have an upper limit. I was told that they do, but it's like 100 gigs of download, <laughs> which means I'm torrenting the internet nonstop. And nobody does that. Right. Like, it's, there may be a limit, but it's unrealistic and I haven't hit it yet and just, I have a lot of even when I was in an apartment with like three other people mm -hmm. and everybody was torrenting shit we still did not break 60 now just for the record you the only things you're torrenting are like the torrent option for like downloading Ubuntu yes it, it's all not illegal downloads right totally just just putting just it out there totes <laughs> Not illegal. Right. Right. Just everything that, you know, because... Right. And okay. we were downloading, like, Steam games. Yeah. yeah. And, uh... You know, peer to peer And Os an Osu Remix albums, which can be torrented, if you like the flack. Speaking of data caps, so Windows 10 is, like, shoving people right through theirs with, like, the peer to peer, um, uh, Windows update system. Uh, Windows 10. I, I got fed up with Windows 10. My computer only runs Ubuntu Mate now. Right. The 1510. Well... I, so part of the issue is I, I had a dual boot set up where it was Windows 10 and Ubuntu and they... And I used Grub set up through UFE and I could switch between the two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Windows 10 does not play well with others. Mm -hmm. So... I had to, so anytime, there was an update recently, like within a month or so ago, mm. that just went in ahead and just said, nope, uh, my hand slipped, <laughs> I, I fixed your MBR, it's just Windows now. <laughs> and when I did eventually work around that and got back into <coughs> Ubuntu, it froze. And I've never had Linux freeze on a login screen. So... Something was wiped out by Windows, and I was super pissed by it. I was like, fine, you know what, fuck you, Windows, and I've got Linux only now. And yeah. I've been using wine staging. 
Um, actually, uh, not last night, but I think the night before that, I, I set up the Windows version of Steam through Wine Staging, and I was playing Rocket League. Oh. Ran perfectly fine. It's, it's a well-optimized game. I didn't have to do any special wine tricks to get that to run. It was super great. You know, eventually, because Microsoft right now is primed to be taken over in the uh, uh, operating system. With their declaration of the last operating system that they're producing, that just keep updating, which we'll see if it's true, but chances are they're just going to try to get in the mobile market now. They're going to pull a Mac OS 10. <laughs> yeah. And just like, it's Windows 10.1, right. it's Windows 10.2, yeah. it's Windows 10.3, it's Windows 10.4. Yeah. They're, they're really service packs. <laughs> they're just paying for service packs. But you know, eventually games and programs are just going to be all written platform independent. Well, a lot of programming or programs are like C, C plus plus, and Java are all. If you're writing an actual C plus plus and not Visual C plus <laughs> plus, which is super popular for whatever reason, yeah. um, it's platform independent. It's also uh, a decent high level programming language. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see like games nowadays because a lot of reasons a lot of people use Windows because of games. As soon as the drivers start working great for Linux. Well, it isn't that. Um, the drivers do work super well with Linux, especially after um, the Steam OS thing. That's true. So, way back when Gabe Newell was like, Windows 8 is the largest piece of garbage I've ever set my eyes upon. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here and do my own thing. Uh, a third of all <coughs> a third of all the Steam games now run on Linux and Mac. Which is tremendous, because, like, five years ago, that wasn't even close to that number. Yeah, because I was, like, only so little of my Steam. I was, like, was super nice. surprised, and it's not, like, indie games, which is a most of them, but, like, Borderlands 2, Left 4 Dead 2, uh, Team Fortress 2, all of the, all of the Fallout, games. Yeah. anything made by Valve works on Linux. Yeah. And, like, Borderlands 2, I was pleasantly surprised. Did Skyrim work on Linux yet? No. Uh, part of that is Bethesda and Microsoft have a very loving, tender relationship. Oh, wow. Very loving and tender. If you... Yeah. But Bethesda is owned by another company that just doesn't right. get shit. <laughs> right. Um, it's like, okay, Bethesda, you do your little thing. Like, if it. they release... Uh, a reiteration of Fallout 4 that works on Linux. That's basically the best thing ever. But I don't think it will. <laughs> I thought... They're they're very heavy on the DirectX 12 over OpenGL, which is, if you're going to make a, a platform-independent game, you go to OpenGL. Well, Vulcan pretty soon. Right. Well, all of the latest graphics cards support OpenGL, and they support OpenGL decent enough. Like the NVIDIA cards support OpenGL super well. Uh, AMD. They were trying to do the mantle and like well, all their other things. <laughs> here's been my experience with AMD and not Windows. Well, even on Windows to an extent. They're like, oh, uh, we haven't updated a driver in what? Um, nine months now? Eh. Now, there's that editor from like what? Like TechZone or something who's going over to AMD to try to like. He's going to be, like, the project director of, like, each department to try to, like, optimize and streamline all that. Yeah, part of it is AMD has so little fucks to give about drivers. <laughs> like, their processors, cheap, really great processors. Uh, when they bought out ATI and yeah. started doing their graphics cards, like, ATI was notorious for not good drivers. And just... ATI... ATI had this issue of taking graphics cards <coughs> once they hit like a two or two and a half year age, Just, they would immediately yeah. drop them into legacy support. Like uh, my 2006 uh, ThinkPad T60 had uh, an ATI 1300X graphics card. Yeah, no, no. And by 2008, it was legacy. Yeah. That's... Do you, have you ever owned a Voodoo card? No. no. I heard those were like... 
picky if you didn't have the right hardware. But yeah. So the other thing is, uh, Linux has AMD drivers, and currently the AMD drivers were written for the latest version of the three kernel, and we're up to four point two. Ah, uh, anyway, sorry about that. I didn't... Fine. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, the 4.2 kernel's been out for, like, nine months. Right. And some of the other versions of Linux, like Arc Linux, that always... Well, the whole thing behind Arc Linux is it will always roll out the latest update. Right. No matter what. Even if it fucks up your system. Because they're meant to be, like, bleeding edge. As soon as that person says it's no longer beta, it's out. And the AMD driver freezes on startup. So currently, the Xorg open source driver runs better than the AMD driver for Linux. Because AMD hasn't updated the driver. They've known about it. Ubuntu's finally got up to the nudist... Uh, kernel or the Linux kernel, and AMD is just like. Well, I mean, it's. They... We'll we'll get to it. it it's yeah. fine, but I this don't... is problematic because of the Steam boxes. Right. So right now, AMD's driver works on the four point two kernel only if you're running the R series. Because if you're not running the latest graphics card, you're not worth anything to anything to them. They're just like, eh, whatever. Update your hardware. <laughs> Not everyone can. Not everyone can buy like a 980 Ti. Or yeah, so, so I'm stuck with slightly older stuff. But no, like, NVIDIA's drivers are great. They're like, we draw, we have these architectures, and we write our drivers to work with the architectures. So if your card runs <clears throat> this architecture, there's an update for it. Mm. Speaking of like, I'm still getting updates from my. Uh, I'm still getting updates from my 760. Yeah, uh, at work they have a 400 something that just got an update to its driver. Oh, oh yeah. Speaking of this card, people, if uh, if you want this as a giveaway, get me up to a hundred subscribers and I will have this as a giveaway um 100 dis subscribers by the end of january of 16 and this would be a giveaway this really big ass card i mean it's it's an oldie but a goodie oh yeah um i was like you could play i was playing skyrim on this for like 2k and still getting like 50 frames i mean i mean it's a gigabyte it's back and to the it time. supports OpenGL super well because it's, N it's NVIDIA, and NVIDIA cares. That sounds like such like a. Look, I've I've had my share of AMD problems, and they're always driver related. The hardware isn't the problem; it's the fact that they can't write code for the hardware. Right. And. Yeah, no, just, like, come on, AMD. I, I believe in you. I believe you can make things work. Oh, well, yeah. And the other part of it is, like, the Steam boxes have to run our series Or yeah. they can't use the graphics card. They have to use the XOR drivers. And the XOR drivers do work super well, especially on SteamOS, because the people at Valve got the code for the drivers from AMD to fix it themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because they didn't want to rely on them for updates. Which you shouldn't. Because they're garbage at updating their software. I noticed that the, uh, though in Linux, upgrading your drivers, you're supposed to probably do it through the internals of Linux versus going to NVIDIA or something and downloading No, you can actually, though. Because okay. um, the... I've done it from NVIDIA, but they always said, no, don't do that. Do it like through the. Well, you want to do what is tested for your current distribution. And that's usually the safest way to do it. Um, I like, mean, unless you're one of those with people. With Ubuntu <laughs> and Debian themselves, they will have in their repositories the additional hardware, 
and the additional hardware, they will tell you which driver they recommended for your hardware. Right. Um, if you're running an Intel card, you will just end up using the XOR drivers mm -hmm. because Intel is... Well, they make good processors. Mm -hmm. And they do make good processors. The GPUs? I have... They a, run decent. Yeah. I mean, I have an AMD FX8350 in there right now. Um, it runs great. <laughs> I It was cheap. It's an 8-core. Right. And Intel... <laughs> Intel... Intel processors are... Can't past 4. <laughs> right. Intel's processors are really, really good. But their graphics... Their built-in graphics cards are just okay. Does Intel? Oh yeah, they kind of. They do. Yeah. They're they do onboard motherboard graphics drivers yeah. or graphic cards, and they're okay. But don't uh, they run the Xorg um, open source video drivers super super well? Um, but that's what most of the Xorg was written for was uh, Intel. But I can't imagine expecting to do any like dedicated like gaming on like you can know. actually um I've i mean done it does it play well i mean i've never well okay here's been my experience the nvidia linux drivers play games super super well uh and nvidia running xorg drivers runs pretty decent there's a little bit of an issue because they're not super optimized for that uh, xorg drivers and amd run super well uh, you currently can't run the AMD drivers from my previous rant about the fact <laughs> that they cause your computer not to restart. Um, so that doesn't run. <laughs> so uh, I was a I was able to do uh, the in-home streaming through AMD Xorg super well. And yeah, I mean I was able to play some easier games. I couldn't imagine playing something like uh, Borderlands 2 or... Metro Last Light. <laughs> Metro Last Light. Or Final Fantasy XIV, which I currently also have running through uh, wine staging. And that one, that runs okay. My graphics card doesn't really support the latest OpenGL super well. So that, if I updated that, it would run a hell of a lot smoother. Hell of a lot smoother. <laughs> super smoother. But it runs decent enough. Like, hell, it played Rocket League, and that's a new game. Rocket League got that award. That's, that's for that uh, game it, award. It's a real... I played it for, what, an hour and a half with some friends of mine <laughs> from Final Fantasy XIV. In fact, one of them gave it to me for free. Like, the graphics card I'm, I'm currently using was mailed to me by one of the people I played yeah. with. Yeah. Super nice. Great community there. But yeah, no, it it's very confusing. Like, I was playing with the keyboard instead of the controller because I couldn't get the controller to work through right. the the layers that I had to go through to I've, make the game run. I've seen people play uh, the uh, Rocket League and like it's fast, but I mean it's fun. Uh, you're not going to get it at first, absolutely not. It, it's a it's a practice type game, like a Team Fortress Two. You mean it's not, it's not really like a button smasher? Like no, super no, you can, you can, <laughs> well, even that, like, in order to play well, you eventually have to figure it out. Yeah. But that's meant to be more entry level anyway, yeah. so. Bows but no. Bowser versus Charizard. <laughs> that's such a garbage matchup that takes forever. Actually, speaking Arr! of Smash Brothers, uh, Cloud. Yeah. From Final Fantasy VII. Oh. It was just recently announced as a character coming out yep. in DLC. And it's Cloud. That's the thing. Yeah. Sure is Cloud Strife. I'm excited if they add some more characters as, like, assist trophies. Like Eris popping out and getting stabbed mercilessly as an assist trophy. That'd be super funny. Like, the whole match stops and Eris comes out and prays and immediately gets stabbed like that'd be funny to me like super fucked up but in a funny way yeah but I was also more I was more excited about the Midgard stage than I was about Cloud because they had all the summons coming out mm. like they had like Bahamut 
Zero popped out and like immediately flew into the background and started shooting a beam of death that moved from the background to the foreground. Yeah. That was super impressive. I'm also hoping that Shiva shows up and freezes everything and then snaps her fingers and everybody takes a fuck ton of damage. Because that's what Shiva do. Yep. Yep, sounds about right. She's a bit. <laughs> yeah. We haven't really no, I don't. Final Fantasy at all. <laughs> no. That's okay. I'm just... Uh, yeah, yeah, sounds Yeah, good. sure. Final Fantasy <laughs> Seven. Yeah, I beat that when I was like two. Yeah, it's, I'm the best of Final Fantasy Seven. So, okay, so going to a different topic. Do you expect that you have good Steam sales this Christmas? Oh, I don't know. I don't have money, and I would have even less than that if I opened up my browser and pointed at steam.com. Well, everyone... Okay, so one of the things is that we're seeing year after year, like, the Black Friday Steam sales and, like, the holiday Steam sales, is it was never as good as when they first did it. Because they were like... Let's just do, like, 75% off of just about everything, and, like... Well, they still do a fuck ton of sales. The problem is people have already bought. distanced themselves, and they've bought everything, because yeah. there's only so many times you can see Left 4 Dead 2 for a dollar. <laughs> oh. I mean, hell, at one point for the anniversary, if you logged on to Steam, they put it in your library. I did actually... No, there was, like, uh... The, I think it was Left 4 Dead that was offered for free on this one day, and I heard yeah. about it. Uh, like... Left 4 Dead 2 was offered for free on Valve's, like, 15th anniversary of Steam or something like <laughs> yeah. that. 15 or 10. So, like, hey, you logged on today? Left 4 Dead 2. Enjoy that. Live it up. And if you didn't get it today, uh, wait till the next sale. It's a dollar. Yeah. I remember buying... Uh, I, I bought the orange box retail. And I bought the orange <laughs> box on Steam. That was my first introduction into Steam. Because I had bought the orange box. And then I realized, like, a year or so later, Portal was offered for free. Team Fortress 2 was offered for free. Yeah, Team Fortress 2 is still free. It's yeah. uh, free to play. And it There's like, microtransactions. Yeah... Does hats really work for Team Fortress? Apparently. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. doesn't do anything. You're just wearing a different hat. Now that brings us to another point. The weapons. The weapons do to, do change things. Like, there's the uh, the Dead Ringer Spy Watch, where any time you're killed, you get a one-up. And you now look like the guy that killed you. Right. And if you die again, you die for real. I think that's what it does. But then there's the also the one that... If you stop moving, your invisibility meter charges up and won't go down until you start moving again. Hmm. That's super funny. You just find the nearest corner, and you just wait. And you just wait and wait until somebody shows up, and you fuck that man's life up. Well, here, this, so microtransactions bring us into another topic of when they should be used. Because you get microtransactions that give you an advantage over other people. That's crap. But if you get microtransactions, it does, like, affect, like, you know, aesthetics. So, my <laughs> question to you is, have you seen the web series Extra Credits? I haven't. Okay, they dealt an entire episode on microtransactions themselves. So, a uh, little background. Uh, extra Credits is a whole bunch of people that are in the industry of game making and game developing and programming and stuff like that. And they talk about... Uh, video game topics in the sense of them uh, from their background so it's like hey we build games let's talk about microtransactions and how to do it correctly and their take on it is <coughs> if you're going to have microtransactions uh make it so that you can earn the currency to buy the microtransaction stuff through in-game or if you want to buy it with money you can also do that that way, the people that are really into the game, they can push and get better and eventually get the same item as somebody that has mom's credit card. Right. So, overall, like, you won't earn it at the same rate as the other person, obviously. But that way, the playing field will be on level terms. So, when that person that's been playing the game for all of these hours finally gets that item, they will be more effective at it 
through practice than the person that just started the game, bought the thing, and tried to run with it. World of Tanks is like that. Like, um, you can buy the premium, but you can also just work really hard and get everything. Right. And that that's mostly how it should work. You know, like Battlefront. Battlefront. Um, the newest Battlefront from EA. It was like people were like in the beta or like closed beta getting like all these advancements because they were paying money to EA and then you, then they hit oh, and then you all of a sudden you had all these super high level characters once oh, that's it went right. public. You, you paid and you got to play it for what? 24 hours before everyone else? Yeah. As like a pre-order bonus or something? Well, I, y yeah. Or yeah. you could get the demo version and only have it for 24 hours. I yeah. played the demo version and I was like, eh, this isn't really no different from like Battlefront 2 or like the original Battlefront 2. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to look at those games and go, well, that's a good series. <laughs> when, uh, God, what was it? It was just after, like, Call of Duty Black Ops 1, and then whatever game came right out after that, finally changed the system requirements. It, the, the Call of Duty series, up until whatever came out of Black Ops, has had the same system requirements and ran on the same engine for, like, seven fucking games. Yeah. They realized very quickly we don't have to change anything. Yeah. Textures, uh, the game engine. It's just, just new throw enemy. a new story in it. Yeah. You know how the software works. You've done it six times already. And just throw it out there again for 60 bucks. Just shoot the person who doesn't speak English, basically. Yeah, well, I mean, that <laughs> series... Uh, like, the Battlefield series started off as a World War Two shooter. Yeah. And then, and then everybody did World War Two, and then... Now it's, it was modern World Like, War Black War. Ops came out, and they're like, what if we did that, but <laughs> not in World War Two? Right. And that was, like, revolutionary. <laughs> and now they're going advanced or future warfare. Yeah. With now, <laughs> modern shooters are too modern. We need to go more modern into the future. Like, crisis. <laughs> yeah... Kind of. I guess. Isn't that... I don't know. There was aliens in that one, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. all about aliens who were already in the Earth. Kind yeah, that's of. weird. That's War of the Worlds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's War of the Worlds. <laughs> it really is. You, that... even, you even have these things with, like, the tentacles that kind of, like, walk. Oh, tripods? Yeah. Yeah, though, that shit's... <laughs> that shit's been so well done that it was in like the 1940s yeah aliens were here the whole time they were just <laughs> that's the scariest type of alien though the one that just sits there waiting for its time so from doctor who you have the darkness so whenever you look at them you see them but when you look away you forget no that's the silence no that's okay and now you also have the angels that if right. you look at them they're solid but then you blink, they move. Also, there's a thing like whatever holds the image of an angel is an angel itself. Yeah. Like the television. Right. So if you look at them to make them stop moving, how do you also not look at them so you don't become an angel? Because remember, Amy, what it was in that one series? Uh, that There was that one episode no, where... because she was touched by an angel. Oh, touched, okay. Yeah, if an angel touches you, they they send you to a cruddy hotel in the 1920s. And then yeah, the, that room. episode. And then like, the and Statue then of Liberty it. itself yeah. was an Oh angel. my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking, I've never seen a shark jump quite like the Statue of Liberty <laughs> is now a weeping angel. And it's holding Rory in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> it just, what? Well, what? it was so weird because they were they, because they're like we've we've got like <laughs> off two characters we've we've got a new companion to move in, what haven't we done yet? Uh, what if the Statue of Liberty was an angel, <laughs> and that man just got a raise? Yes, yes, because you know let's travel to America, because <laughs> they were always. I mean, no, besides so part of that was they were at Comic Con. Yeah, 
They were in New York City. They're like, hey, we're in New York City. Why don't we do a Doctor Who episode? <laughs> like, uh, is what? That, is that really how it works? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they went to Central Park. The, the nice thing with Central Park is the architecture in there is, <laughs> like, the bridges and stuff are from, like, the 1920s. So, um, you can do any period piece filmed in Central Park, and you don't have to change anything. That's true. You want to do uh, a historical Victorian era fiction? Done. Don't have to change anything. Well, you just you just need like low it's, angle camera, good right. contrast lighting, it's, addiction, staring out the window while it's raining. Right. It it's one of those locations that's timeless. Yeah. So they're like, what if we do a Doctor Who episode there? And sure, they're in town anyway. Just bring the production crew with you to Comic Con. So what do you think's the better enemy? The dialects, the angels, or the silence? Oh, they're all different. Well, I mean... I mean, it's not like the Doctor ever had to face all of them, all those big three at the same time. He did, though. Oh, yeah, it was the one at Stonehenge, right? No, it was the, uh... When there was the cube prison thing. They were like, right. all of them were there. Yeah, that was the one at Stonehenge. That, that was, was the, that um... That cube, um... The, pen, <laughs> the Pandora's the box <laughs> or something, whatever. Pandora's box. It was like it was meant to hold the Doctor, and then yeah. they put him in there. The entire universe explodes, kind of, and then like the TARDIS sort of burns up. Yeah, he the trying universe to, like, died, but he reset its K now. Yeah, <laughs> Dramino. If you haven't seen it, we're sorry. We <laughs> spoiled it for you. Oh, sorry. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, except I'm not sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. Spoilers. There comes a time when so much time has passed afterwards that you forfeit okay, the right. Okay, so <laughs> my cutoff is ten years. If if it's been ten years since whatever it is happened or came out, it is no longer... I no longer feel sorry. Spoiler. So, like, if you never watched The Wizard of Oz. Right. That shit was filmed <laughs> so long ago. Like, I feel no sympathy, like, oh, by the way, the house lands on the witch. Yeah. Like, if you haven't figured that out by now, I don't know who failed you in your life. Just, you have to figure that out. Have you ever own, wanted to be, like, born again so that, like, all, the, like, the exciting things, like, when no, you again? because there's always something new and exciting. That's, that's why, I like, MMOs, like, a I, new patch comes out. And they're like, this game you're super used to, here's something new. Yeah. Examples of doing that wrong and right. Like, for instance, the in Skyrim, the uh, first DLC of Vampires vs. Werewolves, that felt more like just, they just added another uh, thing, like the companions or the, you know, the Dark Brotherhood. So, one of the, the less expansions of that um, Elder Scrolls did right... It was like that Soul Stain one. No, they... No, uh, in Oblivion. Yeah. Uh, the Shivering Isles. Yeah, that's the one I always hear about. Yeah. The Shivering Isles, compared to the rest of the game, is so bizarrely unique. Um, from getting to the island, and walking into the first room, and talking to the guy, and then, uh, the room fades away as butterflies, and you are now in a completely different map that looks vastly different from anything else you've ever been at is really amazing. Almost like a, they could have just done it as a whole new game. They could have done it as its own game. Absolutely. Um, it's one of those things that wasn't really explored. Like, yeah, the Daedras have their Daedra home. Like, mm -hmm. the Daedra realm. Or whatever it is. Oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've gone into Oblivion before... But you've never actually gone to Oblivion where a Daedric Prince actually lives. Yeah. And it's something new that they haven't done yet, and they made sure that it felt new. Right. It's not like they just said, okay, this Daedra lives in this really nice looking castle, with like little tea cozies. Right, but even. <laughs> I uh, wouldn't be surprised. So the town that Sheogorath lives in <laughs> is split down the middle. There's his. There's the Euphoria side, and then the Manic side, where everybody's suspicious, and the other side is everybody's in a, like, an LSD drug feud. 
Could you imagine? And, like, the the two halves even continue into the castle. Like, even his throne room is split halfway down the middle. It's super cool. And if you haven't got... You, you have access to my Steam library. I've yeah. got Oblivion on there with the Shivering Isles. Treat yourself. I think I had that on my hard drives, actually. Sometimes. I mean, it's, it's Steam. You just discussed it. You just right-click, install. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Easy peasy. So... And that one, you can level acrobatics by just hopping on the roof like a little bunny. <laughs> no, it's like in San Andreas. Like, riding the bicycle, you can ride the bicycle faster than, like, trains or cars. Yeah. If you if you don't skip leg day. It's really weird. That game, I still say, was pretty awesome. Because my reason why I hated Grand Theft Auto 4... Was the cousin... No. Because that's what everybody hates. <laughs> everybody hates a Navi. I liked San Andreas because there was so much diversity in the map. Because hmm. you had, like, your desert, your forest, your city, your, you know, all of that. Like, you could drive and have inclement weather that was, you know, specific to the regions. And then you got into Grand Theft Auto 4 and it just felt super small. I was told that there was supposed to be a whole, like, you know, other area in Grand Theft Auto 4, like they were supposed to expand the countryside. Yeah, but that was one of those, they ran out of time. Yes. I, I'm i pretty sure that's one of those games that you can get to those areas, just not finished. Yeah. Well, like in Skyrim, like, apparently the entire thing of Tamriel is loaded. Yeah, you know? uh, it's just on the other side of the... Like, Merowind was in there before they uh, put in the DLC that let you go there. Yeah. Like, they have all of the scroll, uh, Elder Scroll lands all in there. Yeah. But you just can't access them. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, I... Without cheating. Well, yeah, but I've used, I've, like, did the mods, I've removed the borders, and I've tlc you know, no collision to all these different areas. I mean, it's not like it's finished. It's not like you can, like, literally go there. There's people walking around. It's just literally like the land mesh. And eventually, the land that's walkable is runs out, and it's just, like, an even lower res mesh that you just can fall through <laughs> if you're not careful. But, you know, that like that spiral city thing, that the spire city thing, what was that, Maryland? Oblivion? Had that, like, one city that was a big circle, and then it had the spire in the middle. I'll be honest. I got a little lost in... I, I played Oblivion a few times, and the first time I got super lost trekking through the country to get to some place I don't quite remember where, uh, and my T60 couldn't really find Oblivion. No. Uh, so it was fun. And then when I eventually got it again, I immediately leveled up, went to the Shivering Isles, and had nothing but the fun. Remember the walk animation in, like, Marowind for the Argonians? No. I, I had Marowind. I never actually played it. Well, like, like Argonians, were, I don't think, were ever done right until Skyrim. I mean, maybe in the, like, the, uh, 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 Marsh, the Swamp area, Black Marsh. I, they may have been done there, but, like, so, in, they looked like ducks. Like, they were like, and, like, you could load a patch to make them look better. But it wasn't until Skyrim that you could fully breathe underwater. Yeah. That was, that was one of the most ridiculous things. So the Shivering Isle has a ring that gives you both water walking and water breathing. So Jesus? Well, here's the thing. You can't go underwater when you have water walking up. That's true. So... <laughs> A is lot, that, of, is that a like, lot of the items are needlessly frustrating. Is that like if you get glitched in the game, you at least won't die? No, it was literally, they, they talk about the ring just being needlessly frustrating. Now, was that like a plot point? Oh, somebody mentioned it. Oh. It was in one of the museums. Because I could imagine a game like that getting like so meta. Like, there was that staff that you can get in Skyrim that like just changes people into just random things. Yeah, the Wabajack. Yes. I love that. The, the Sheogorath. Um, Daedric <laughs> Artifact. Yeah. Yeah, it's really weird. If you ever get that, it's, it's 
It's weird. It's like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Which most of Shadow Garath is like that. Yeah. Speaking of crazy things, you should, you should never kind of ever watch um, the remake of Willy Wonka. Don't ever watch it. <laughs> yeah. It was. I haven't. I, there were some points where it was more faithful to the Raw Doll book. And then there are some ways that the original was more like the Raw Doll book. But neither one of them quite got it right. Yeah. Also. Uh, I Johnny heard it was Depp. really weird. Like. I like Johnny Depp when he's not being Johnny Depp. <laughs> you mean like in the Pirates of the Caribbean? Right. Because that's uh, like. After what? Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> he started being typecast as Jack Sparrow in all of his fucking movies. <laughs> Which. Why? Because. It's instantly recognizable. Also, because most of those other movies were, like, Tim Burton. Yeah. Tim Burton and Helen and Bonham Carter. Well, I feel like Pirates of the Caribbean is like where they really put his tattoos to use. Right. Right. <laughs> no, like, Like, uh, Sparrow, because he actually had That's a weird tattoo, people, that he has. That's Sparrow. Like, no... Is it No Country for Old Men he was in? Was it? I don't remember. Well, he was in the the original Friday the 13th. No, 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 Friday the 13th. Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. He was a lot younger than him. He was super <laughs> fucking young. Like, holy shit. I didn't realize he was in it until I kept seeing over and over again that he was in it. So I went and rewatched it. And, yep, yeah, he's so young. Speaking of... Wee baby Johnny Depp. Oh, Wolf of Wall Street. Who is that guy? The, he never won the army. Oh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, what is it with him never like winning any award? Well, <laughs> is I mean, the problem is, anytime he's in a movie, the movie will get awards. He won't because there will be somebody else giving a slightly better performance than something else. <laughs> Like, he didn't get one for Titanic. Which he probably should have. Uh, the, the lady from Titanic got one. He Boop didn't. Factor? Mm. Well, I mean, K K what's uh, what's he didn't the name? get one for Shutter K Island. So? Uh, he didn't get one for Wolf of Wall Street. Because that movie had more Fs, like 3.5 Fs per minute. But we can do better than that. The Wolf of fucking Wall Street starring Leonardo fucking DiCaprio in the fucking luxurious You're lifestyle. Too hard. <laughs> too hard. Okay. But no, he, he always makes good movies on the year where somebody else does something better and more noticeable. And that's yeah. his problem. His timing is off. At least he's not as bad time. as, like, um. Like anybody that was hoping to win a Grammy this, this year. Well, I'm so sorry you chose the year Adele decided to drop something else. <laughs> that woman has enough Grammys to crush any other person to death that is trying to do a music career. At least it's not as bad as Will Smith, who tried to like, get his son to star in like... Quit trying to make Jaden Smith a thing. Yeah. You're not going to make Jaden Smith a thing. Give up. Jaden Smith, well, I'm sure he's a lovely child. And I'm sure he's super nice. And his Twitter for a while was just the inspiration for so many YouTubers. Yeah. Just the amount of weird fucking shit that he put out there. <laughs> just his... We can't all be PewDiePie. Right. But, like, Jaden Smith's Twitter was, like, a 14-year-old child that just tried pop for the first time. And just the random shit that he <laughs> spouted out. And it was beautiful, and just... The fact that Will Smith bought a movie for his son to be in. Yeah. Was, so, After Earth. And mm -hmm. then found the cheapest, most uh, well-known director he could find. And unfortunately, that was M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. It was like... Give just, me I bought my son a movie and had Shyamalan direct it. It's kind of like, give me the, you know... Mexican equi Mexican equivalent of James Cameron. Mm. No, or no, not James. He's Indian. Yeah, uh, the Indian equivalent of um, who's the guy that's directing the new Star Wars? Oh, he's the one that just touched. J. J. Abrams. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
There's like that Indian equivalent. Well, there. kind of. Shyamalan... Oh, God. So Shyamalan's big thing was... He was billed very early on as, like, an amazing director. Yeah. And, like... No Bollywood sh- movie? What? No, it was, uh... Bollywood's bigger than Hollywood. Sixth Sense. And then it was a Shatter? The, like, superhero Shatter. one? Mm-hmm. And those are really good. And then people just started, like, when Signs came out, they just started to notice maybe he wasn't as good as they thought he was. And then, like, Lady in the Water came out. And that was... That was it. The the man behind the curtain was finally revealed, and that man cannot help himself. But right twists. Like, the village... Yeah. Uh, going back to the whole discussion of it's been ten years, <laughs> uh, spoilers, I guess, uh, they weren't in a 16th century village, they were in modern times the whole time. Yeah. Like, signs, the aliens are weak against water and decided to invade a planet that's two-thirds water. Like, you can see the water from space. That, like, I'm... it shouldn't be surprising that we have water. When you can see it from the moon. Mm. Like, that's a decent pace back. Like, they they should have noticed the water before they got here. And apparently doorknobs. They, they can't turn doorknobs. It's like that one movie that the guy um, who was... Who's there, that Armageddon dude? Um, oh, uh, Roland Emmerich? Like, the director of Armageddon? No, well, the, the lead actor there... He was, oh, so... There really wasn't one, because it's Roland Emmerich, and he's That's all about the cast of thousands. That's true. But there was the thing about, uh, like, it was a similar plot point. The aliens were afraid of water and, like, the crop circles. In that, movie. that was science. No, that was. That was still science. Or, like, the one, like, where, like, his son had, like, uh... Asthma? Yeah. That was also science. Oh, that was? Okay. Yeah, all of those really shitty... Plot points about aliens that was all literally the same movie that was Signs. Oh, okay. Signs was not good. No, I. It was no, it was weird. it was not kind of good. It. Uh, fucking oh god! So like devil. How long have we been? F- oh, been going for an hour. Oh whatever. Oh, should we split them up? No, no. I I, I have a good account. I can like upload out a long video. Oh, okay. So like. Oh, 30 more minutes, probably. Yeah, just... Not that much longer. Just, Jesus Christ, like, Shyamalan. All of Shyamalan. It's, like, Devil? Did you did you even hear about that one? So basically, <laughs> it's like, a bunch of people are trapped in the elevator, and one of them might be the Devil, and the the thing is, it was the first person that died was actually the Devil the whole time, and it was an old lady. I mean... Like, that that was dumb, and unto it, itself, but, like, <laughs> part of the other problem with that particular yeah, you, movie... You've seen Duplex, right? Oh, yeah, no, that one was just ridiculous. I like Duplex. It was an absurd comedy. Yes. It had a better charm about it. It wasn't, like, trying to be... So, like, I like unintentionally funny movies. Like, movies that aren't... That are funny because of how that seriously campy they take things. Yeah. Like, Birdemic or The Room. But, like, Shyamalan's movies try to be pretentious. Yeah. And fail. And are super funny because of it. Mm-hmm. Like, in Devil, one of the ways you can tell if the devil's nearby, mm-hmm. you flip a toast with jelly on one side of it, and the jelly side falls up. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, Shaman wrote that and was like, this, this is cinematic brilliance at its best. Like, jelly toast. Yeah. Like, brilliant. I mean, it's not, can't be as bad as, like, Independence Day. Well, Independence Day, that Godzilla movie with Matthew Broderick. <laughs> it was Armageddon. so cliche, like, let's nuke the bastard. <laughs> the Day After Tomorrow. Those are all Roland Emmerich, and Roland Emmerich's problem is he likes a cast of thousands. Yeah. 
Like, anybody that is on screen for a second has a script and a backstory. Um, and <laughs> just, like, you get a part, and then you get a side story, you get a side story, and you get a line, then you get a line, and, like, after an hour of just setting up all of these characters, is like, okay, time for some plot. We're gonna solve this, 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 and this, and that order, <laughs> and then roll credits. His formula works, and it's campy, and it's brilliant, and, like, Independence Day, sure, why not? That, it's just every one of his movies has the Will same Smith archetypes. Smith it, didn't it? It did. And I was like... <laughs> it had Will Smith. It had Jeff Goldblum. It had the guy that played the president from West Wing in it, playing the president. Yep. But then the president went in a jet fighter and took out some aliens himself. Super rad. It was like, well, you know, I have Top Gun. Oh, Top Gun... Top Gun's homoerotic. Yes, I... Like, the whole Tom Cruise being gay... Yeah. ...was because of Top Gun, and then it took them forever, and they still haven't really successfully dispelled that rumor. Yeah. Because, you know, South Park did their, like, come out of the closet, Tom. Yeah. Not a little... I... It taught us... I mean, hell, uh... It taught us... Jonathan Colden did a song about Tom Cruise that... It did that, like, it did, um... Danger Zone, like, two times. Three times in that movie. It was the 80s. When it, it, you pay for a song, you get your money's worth. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of that show on the weekend. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Hit that like button. Hit that dislike button. Do what you gotta do. Leave a comment below. We do read them. Also, if we get 100 subscribers by the end of January 2016, I'll be giving away that 760 I talked about. Um, so don't want to miss that. Hit the subscribe button. Get us to 100 subscribers. Alright, that's the show. Thank you, and thank you for listening. See you next time.